My name is Jordan Yu. I'm the Watershed Protection Specialist for an environmental nonprofit called Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. We're actually based just down the street uh, from this, this building, but today we're going to be talking about rain barrels. Hopefully you're all here to see uh, how to install one, why we need one, and learn a little bit about how to maximize in-home rainwater collection. So first of all, a little bit about my organization. We work to preserve and protect the Chattahoochee River, which is the source of Atlanta's drinking water. And my job selling rain barrels is part of that. So rainwater uh, collection at home is a great way to reduce the municipal water usage. Uh, most, of the, most of the water that we use, uh, that, that we take from the river, actually goes towards residential sources and not towards commercial and other sources. So one of the biggest ways that we can contribute to keeping water in the river is by using less at home. And rainwater collection is a huge part of that. So most of you probably want to use a rain barrel to collect water for your garden. And that's what most of our members use it for as well. A couple of benefits to using rainwater instead of municipal water uh, to water your garden. Uh, first of all, it's free. Uh, you collect water coming off of your roof that goes down to your gutters and ends up in the rain barrel. And that water you don't have to pay for. It doesn't go through the municipal treatment steps, so it doesn't contain any chlorine or lime or other chemicals that you may not want in your home garden. Moreover, using a rain barrel at home can help prevent flooding downstream. A lot of the big problems we see in Atlanta from trash pollution and from the sedimentation pollution come from the fact that rainwater just washes off your gutters or into your downspout and then on into the street into storm drains. By collecting it in a rain barrel first, we slow that process down. It allows water to enter the environment in a more slow fashion, uh, reducing flooding and other kinds of pollution. So there's a number of reasons uh, from the sort of technical municipal wastewater reasons to just saving money that you might want a rain barrel. Um, so here we're just going to talk you a little bit through how to install one and how to get the most out of it. So if you'll come over here. So here is what comes with the barrel kit. You have the hole saws. These are how you're going to drill into your barrel and into your downspout. Everything that you need is included with the kit. The only thing that you need to bring is a drill. The hole saws are included as well as the spigot and the fittings for the barrel. These create a watertight seal and make it so that no water or mosquitoes can get in or out of the barrel unless you want to. There's also this device. This is called the FlexFit Diverter. This is basically what catches the water coming down your downspout and diverts it into the barrel. This will go, and we'll look at this more in depth closer uh, later, but this will insert into your gutter. It, 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 uh, it's flexible, so you'll put it through a hole in your, your downspout. It'll expand, and water coming down will actually fall into this trough and get diverted out through this tube and into your barrel. And the nice thing about this is if you ever want to stop collecting water at any time, you, can, you don't have to change your downspout configuration. You don't have to cut off or block your downspout. All you have to do is turn it upside down, and it'll stop collecting water, uh, say, if you want to stop during the winter. Uh, when you want to start collecting rain again, you can just turn it up like that. So now we're going to uh, drill some holes in the barrel and start installing this in the actual downspout. Actually, first, a little bit about uh, ideal barrel placement. As you see here, we've got the rain barrel on top of a couple concrete blocks. We recommend that homeowners place them on top of cinder blocks or pavers, something to give the barrels a little bit of height. The, uh, the more water pressure, the, the higher above ground you get the barrels, the more water pressure there is. And if you raise the barrel above the ground, you'll get a little bit more room to put a bucket underneath so that you can reach uh, the spigot with a bucket or a hose or whatever you need. The, one of the important things uh, to note when placing them is to make sure that they are in a stable location at the right height above the ground. 
When these barrels are full they weigh, of water, they weigh about 500, 600 pounds. So you want to make sure that whatever you're putting them on is a really secure, solid foundation. You also, like I said, want to make sure that you put them on cinder blocks or pavers, something to give you a little bit of height off the ground. That not only makes it easier to put a bucket or a watering can underneath, it also increases the water pressure if you use the spigot for a drip irrigation system or something like that. The water pressure from the barrel alone won't be enough to run, say, a sprinkler, but uh, any little bit of height you get will give you some water pressure and that'll certainly help out with whatever you're using it for. We have a quick question. Yeah. What do you recommend the height of uh, the barrel be? Uh, as, as high as you can. A couple, a couple feet provided that you can uh, that you can provide a stable foundation. If you have a raised patio or a deck with a downspout next to it, that is a good, uh, that's a good height. Um, if you have a couple cinder blocks, you can stand them on end or maybe a large tree stump, you could put it on there. Um, in general, about two feet of height creates one pound of pressure. So you can use that to kind of gauge how much uh, you need to raise it above the ground. But in general, I would say at least raise it high enough so that you can get a bucket underneath. Okay, and if you have a sloping situation, right. you use the blocks to, it's really important to have a level Yes, barrel. it's important to have the barrel on a, a, a level if, you're, if you have a sloping backyard. It's also advised, say if you have a garden or a, a, a lawn that you're watering, it's advisable to place the barrel above that so that there's a water pressure, you know, you're moving water from the barrel downhill towards the, uh, towards the garden or wherever you're using the water. That will just make it easier in the long run, but in general, it's required to have a solid level surface to place the barrel on. Okay, those, are good, those are great questions. Um, now I think that we've got the barrel situated where we want it. It's raised above the ground and it's in front of our downspout here. Uh, it's time to drill the holes and insert all the fittings. So I'm gonna do that right now. Just press this on the ground. Actually, I'll give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of advice. So you can drill the spigot, uh, the outlet for the water, wherever you'd like. We leave that up to the homeowner, but we recommend people do it in this sort of general area. That gives you a little bit of height above the ground, um, like I said before, but also uh, it leaves most of the area of the barrel open to collect water. Obviously, if you move the spigot down farther, it will drain more completely when you empty it, um, but you'll have less clearance under here to put a bucket. At the top, we suggest placing the uh, inlet for the barrel as high as possible, so say right here. Um, and make sure that the orientation of the inlet uh, with respect to the spigot is what you'd like to see. So what I mean by that is, if you'll, if you'll come over and show this song. So the pipe leading from the downspout will need to curve around uh, and enter into the barrel. And so you wouldn't want to put the spigot right here with respect to the, the inlet because the, the tube only extends so far. You really want to have the tube just uh, connecting the gutter to the barrel to be as short as possible and have the spigot as close to where you need it as possible. So that's just something to keep in mind when you install the barrel. Obviously, it'll be different for each situation and it'll be intuitive when you actually have the barrel set up next to your gutter. Is there anything in addition they can use to increase the water pressure? Um, it's really, it's really only, the water pressure is really only a function of height. Think of it as like a water tower. The higher up the water is with respect to the place you're watering, the more pressure there'll be. Um, other than that, you know, it's a open, non-pressurized system. You know, just collecting water that's coming off of your roof and going down your, your gutters. So you're not going to get an incredible amount of water pressure like you would from a municipal water supply. Uh, but now I'm just going to drill the holes and insert the fittings uh, for the barrel.
your, your barrel at home uh, won't have a hole in the bottom, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, so this is the uh, grommet that we use to insert uh, into the hole, and the spigot will screw into this. So we'll just press that in. It's a tight fit, but that's so it's watertight. And then here is the included spigot. Um, it's made of plastic and it only has one outlet, but you can replace it with a metal one. You can have one with multi different outlets or attachments, whatever you need. The threads are a standard size, and so uh, they'll all fit into this, into this hole. All right, now you've attached the spigot to the bottom of the barrel, and we can uh, figure out where we want to drill the hole at the top. George, can I ask a question? Yeah. How did you select the drill bit size for that? Right, so the, the drill bits are all included with the kit. The sizes, um, which drill bit you need to use for which hole are all included in the instructions, but just as a general rule, the smallest bit is for the spigot, the medium bit is for the inlet, and the largest bit is for the downspout. So if you think about the, the, travel, the water traveling, it goes through the largest hole, and then the medium hole, and then finally out through the small hole. Like I said, all the drill bits are included and the instructions for which bit to use when, those are be included in your kit uh, packet. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, this small hole is used for the uh, spigot. And now we're going to drill the next size up before the inlet. I just need to change the bit. I believe someone asked about changing the lid of the barrel beforehand. That is not necessary. We're just using it for demonstration purposes. Right. The, the barrel is a closed system. You uh, can't readily take off the lid of our barrels. There are, however, two uh, basically ports in the top that you can unscrew, and you can use that to empty out the barrels if need, clean them if you'd like. But uh, on the barrels that we provide, the bottom and the top are solid and sealed. Um, Yeah. People who um, do not have a kit, where's the best place for them to acquire? Um, I think they may have uh, kits here. Um, if you do not have a kit and, and uh, food bank can provide them, you can get them online from a supplier called the Rain Barrel Depot. The Rain Barrel Depot is where we get these kits. They're a local company based in North Georgia, and they make all of these conversion kits so that you can turn a barrel like this into a rain, uh, rain collection system. Um, they all use the same, a similar kind of technology and they all have instructional videos online showing you how to install them. But yeah, the, the Rain Barrel Depot is the place to go. That's where we get our equipment from. All right, so this is the inlet, and this is the grommet that goes into the inlet. Perfect. And we'll show you kind of what it will look like. It's all set up. Okay. Come over here. So basically, what will happen is we'll drill a hole in here and then we will connect it like this. Uh, this diverter tube is about three feet long. It's flexible and so it should reach around most corners. The thing that you want to make sure, uh, the most important thing is that it stays level. So 
you want it to be level with the downspout. If it's like this, you'll collect a lot of water, but you won't be able to come back out. And if it's like this, obviously you won't collect any water. So you want to make sure that the tube is level. If it's level, it'll also act as a overflow protection. So this doesn't need any valves or specific mechanisms to prevent it from over, overfilling. Basically what happens is when the barrel fills up with water, once it gets to the top, the water will flow back out of the tube and into your downspout as normal. And so the gutter, the downspout system itself acts as the overflow protection. So the, div the diverter will collect water, will siphon off some water, until the barrel's full, and then your downspout will act as normal after that. So now I'm going to uh, drill the hole in the downspout, and then we can connect up all of the tubes. So, let's see, the hole is here, about level is right here, and so we'll mark this location to drill the, drill the hole. No, on this side. Safety goggles, especially <laughs> during this part. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is this is a bit thicker than your home gutter, so it'll it'll go easy a lot easier on uh, your gutter. If this is too thick, we also have a demonstration gutter that we can uh, use to show you. Mm -hmm. Got a bottle here of a typical residential downspout. This industrial one is quite a bit thicker. Uh, this is just the pretty thin uh, stamped metal that you'd find at your home store. Basically, the diverter will go in. So imagine this is your home gutter. You will take this diverter once you have the hole in your downspout you'll squeeze it. Uh, it's made of rubber, so you can squeeze it and insert it into the hole. Diverter does not cover the entirety of the uh, area of the downspout. I don't know if you can see that, but it'll still let most of the water through. Uh, only a little bit will be diverted, but even in a light rainstorm that the area that is diverted towards the barrel is more than enough in order to fill up the barrel completely. With about one inch of rain on a typical roof surface, it'll collect about 700 gallons of water. Obviously, this barrel can only hold 60, so you'll have no problem with even a light shower filling up your barrel. So I... I think we're just going to leave this uh, industrial gutter as it is and demonstrate using the home gutter I have uh, how to correctly uh, install the tube and get the rain barrel set up for uh, finally collecting some rain. So we're going to take this. So 
Now imagine this is your gutter right here. Well, the only thing that's left to do now is to attach the hose between these two areas. The, this hose is three feet long when fully extended, but it's flexible, uh, it's pretty strong. All you need to do, like I said before, is just make sure it's level. you have this set up in your, in your gutter system, the water will come down through this pipe and it'll fill up the barrel. After your first rainstorm, it should fill up all the way. And assuming that you empty out the barrel as it fills, uh, if, you, if it fills up and you completely empty it and wait for it to rain again, you should be able to save at least 700 gallons of water a year, up to 1300 gallons if you use it a lot. And that's pretty much it for the rain barrel installation. Um, I know Fred will talk to you a little bit about painting, uh, but just a word, uh, a little bit of a note about our barrels. This barrel is already opaque and colored blue, but the ones that we provide are white and semi-translucent. And those ones uh, need to be painted in order to help keep algae growth down. Your roof has bacteria and algae that get washed into the barrel. And so by painting it an opaque color, you'll be able to prevent algae growth from growing inside the barrel and, uh, and clogging up your system. So for people who do not necessarily have downspouts, what is a good option for them to be able to collect rain? Right, so if you don't have a downspout, you can make something called a rain funnel or basically just a system to direct rain coming down into the top of the barrel. Our barrels have a couple of holes at the top that you can unscrew and say if you take, if you have a circular piece of plastic or a conical piece of metal, you can use that in order to uh, direct water into your barrel without the use of the baby. Uh, and another person asked about the use of a hose, but what you mentioned is that you can create or get a splicer or just an extra part of hose directly to the downside. Your, your garden hose, the included spigot, uh, has a standard thread size, so your normal hose should fit into this, uh, this socket. But this, uh, if you want to replace this spigot with a different one, with a different size, or a different design, different material, you can do that. Uh, it's all a standard size. All right, is that it? Uh, okay, I'm gonna talk it? about the barrel itself for a second. I think George just mentioned these barrels are okay. The barrel is opaque, so if the, if the positioning of this barrel is in full sun, then uh, you may end up getting a little algae growth on the inside of the barrel. And if you get algae growth inside the barrel, eventually that could affect the flow of water through your spigot because there's not much pressure behind it to push the loose algae out. So if your barrel is positioned in sun, you may want to get creative and paint it. So you can paint this with any kind, especially if your barrel is at a school and you want the kids to do it, or if you want to just put a message on there, whatever you want to do. You can paint this plastic surface with a number of different materials. You can use any kind of paint that you have, but um, it's a shiny surface and the paint sometimes comes back off. So uh, if you want it to stay, then you have uh, you can get this at any big box store or any hardware store. These are clear top coat um, enamel finishes. So after you paint the design or the message that you want on that barrel, 
if you don't spray it with a clear coat on the outside, the paint's gonna flake off because of the smoothness of the barrel. So that's just a tip, learn the hard way. If you want your message to last, your beautiful artwork to stay on the barrel, spray it with a top coat of clear enamel when you're done. So you're talking about using latex or water-based paint. What if um, someone has spray paint available? That's good, it'll also flake off. Okay. Spray paint is the, definitely the easiest way, but if you want to make a clear design, you know, you're probably better with brushes, uh, depending, you know, or even if you were going to stencil it with spray paint or something like that. But if, if you want to, something that's like, brushwork is the best artwork, I think. You can do a great job with spray paint. Some people are proficient with spray paint. <laughs> I am not one of those people. If I was going to do flowers or vegetables on here, I would do it with a brush and then I would spray it with a clear coat to make sure it helps. If you, if you really planning on making sure it lasts forever or have really intricate artwork. What you can also do is coat the entire barrel in a plastic safe primer. You can make sure that uh, whatever metal can or paint you're using is a plastic safe primer. You can use that as a base coat and then you can use acrylic paint or latex paint on top of that. And that may help it last a little bit longer than just putting uh, the acrylic paint on the barrel itself uh, without that. Okay. That's about it, I think. Uh, Jordan did mention that uh, these barrels had syrup in it and they smell pretty amazing. Um, so uh, you want to make sure you leave these caps in place because not only mosquitoes, but sometimes if there's a dry, a dry if you go through a dry spell, squirrels will try to get water out of the barrels and uh, they, they won't be able to get back out if they fell in. So um, you want to leave those caps in place. Are we ready for questions? Yeah. Okay, uh, so have you any questions? Feel free to take yourself off of milk. Uh, mute if you'd like to ask out loud, or you can take your questions in the chat. Uh, where can we go to get more barrels? Right, so you can come to us, Chattahoochee Brewer Keeper. We provide barrels at a, as a cheap price. Uh, but you also don't have to use these barrels. These are food grade repurposed barrels, but if you have the correct diverter kit, any container will work. You could use a trash can, a, any large plastic drum, anything that's strong enough to hold the 500 or so pounds of water, you can use. I've seen people use other types of plastic drums. I've seen people use just regular gray garbage bins uh, with holes drilled in them, just like the barrel. So you can get barrels from us or you can buy them online, but you don't need to use a barrel just like this. You can, you can improvise uh, for your situation. Now, what if you want to collect more water, more than 50 gallons? All right, you can use multiple barrels. Um, that's what we recommend. You can string the barrels together. Imagine a, a barrel connected to your gutter and then another barrel connected to the first barrel. You can, uh, using the same diverter kit, sort of daisy chain them together to uh, collect more water. Or if you have multiple downspouts in your house, you can attach one to each downspout, uh, depending, you know, one on your garage, one on your main roof. So the solution to more water collection is to use more barrels. Uh, if you really want to collect water, I suggest, you know, say thousands of gallons at a time. I suggest going with a purpose-built solution, and there are plenty of options available at home stores or online uh, if you want to go that route. For entering into home rainwater collection, this is a perfect size, um, and uh, I don't think you'll have much trouble using the water from this. We have another question. Can we use water coming from a subcon? I Again, it depends on what you're using it for and how you plan on getting into the barrel. These kits are designed to use the water from your roof running through your gutters. Um, you can conceivably attach it, uh, get water in here through some other means. As long as you are okay with using the water to water your lawn or your plants, um, you, it doesn't matter where the water comes from, um, this will store it. Yeah, another source of water 
uh, can be the condensation from an air conditioning unit. The problem is that most people's residential air conditioning units are on the ground outside the house and you can't get the water up to the barrel. But if you've got a roof mounted um, air conditioner and there's uh, especially at, uh, you see these at apartment complexes and things where the water is coming down from enough height, but um, rainwater condensated, excellent water, it'll give you a constant flow even when it doesn't rain. Okay, do we have any other questions? So just to let you all know, if you've attended today's Zoom, we will be sending a follow-up email containing a recording of this. I know that the wind has been loud, we had a few tech issues, but if there's anything you need to review, you'll be able to do so, do so with that. And well, thank you everyone. It looks like uh, Gwen has, uh, wants you to review the painting part again. Okay. Okay. Uh, just to touch on the painting again, uh, the reason why you might want to paint it is because if the barrel is in the sun and it's an opaque barrel like this, some natural algae will begin to develop on the interior surface of the, of the barrel. So you'll be able to see it darker, it'll become darker and darker as algae builds up. That algae eventually will start to flake off. If it comes off in a big enough flake, it can actually um, disrupt the flow of water through the spigot because there's not much pressure behind it to drive it out. So um, if your barrel is in full sun, it's, it's probably a good idea to put some kind of a covering of paint, a darker finish on there so that algae won't grow inside the barrel. Painting it, I would recommend with a brush, flowers, fruits, vegetables, you can put messages on there, but the paint will flake off unless you shoot it with a finish, some kind of a clear finish at the end or the paint will flake out. So um, you can get this stuff at any Ace Hardware or any box hardware store. Just spray the whole barrel. It won't go inside. It won't affect the quality of the water. Nothing on the outside is gonna penetrate the plastic. Um, and so you can put anything on the outside without uh, diminishing the quality of the water inside. But once again, the clear coat is gonna give you some longevity there. Gwendolyn, were you um, asking about the brand of the paint? Of the paint? Thank you, Ms. Holden. Absolutely. You could even use a light colored paint, like yellow or white, but it'll still cut the amount of sunlight getting into the barrel and prevent that algae buildup. But uh, we appreciate you all joining us today. And feel free to email gardens at foodwellalliance.org or chattahoochee.org or jyu at chattahoochee.org if you have questions about kits. Fantastic. We wish everyone a beautiful day and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Happy installing. Oh, thank you so much for your time.